Hello everyone, my name is Carlos Morales. I run AI for Ambic. So next I'd like to talk a little bit about the tailwinds that I'm seeing in the a in the very small endpoint AI space. Small in terms of physical size, not small in terms of ecosystem. I think the most important uh, trend I'm seeing is that uh, researchers are finally realizing that small is beautiful, right? Small is uh, sexy. For a very long time, the way you got your papers published is you, you published in the, you know, I beat, I made a bigger model. I made GPT-3, I made Dolly. They, they, they do get a lot of ink and that's what's on the New York Times because the results are pretty impressive. So a lot of research cycles went that way. People are now realizing that to make AI practical, not just at the endpoint, but anywhere, you need much smaller models. And so you're seeing research into efficiency, research into com model compression, Quantization is getting very sophisticated. Pruning is getting very sophisticated. These techniques make it possible to squeeze an AI into the chips that we're used to putting in at the endpoint. Um, another strong trend, besides research, is there's now that it, it's getting practical, there's an ecosystem building around it. So you see dozens of startups uh, producing uh, tools on top of a mature AI tool chain, a software stack. Um, that is now enabling the subject matter experts to do AI instead of like people like me who are kind of nerdy. And then finally, there's a computational advances, like finally being able to, to do real compute at the endpoint without burning through your battery in an hour is critical. Otherwise it's not practical. So, so, and, and not to toot our own horn, but having something that sips power while doing real inference and speech interfaces and, uh, other kinds of analytics is critical to making this uh, environment, this 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 market, uh, practical. I've mentioned the word endpoint AI a few times, and I figured I should define it. What I mean by endpoint AI is AI that happens all the way at the endpoint, meaning your smart shirt or your smart uh, uh, watch or your your like intelligent wall sockets. These are all examples of uh, endpoint AI. And the reason it's useful is because the traditional way of capturing, say, let's talk about a speech interface, right? When you talk to an OK computer, a Siri, an Alexa, um, the traditional way of doing it is you do the keyword trigger locally, then you capture some sound waves, you send that to your phone, which then sends it to the cloud, which processes it and sends it back. So the round trip is terrible, right? The round trip, and we've all had this experience of having less than ideal latency while we're waiting for Siri or Alexa to start a timer. Um, you're also burning power. So, so at Ambic, we're, we're power obsessed. And it's a lot lower power to do analytics locally than it is to transmit using RF, even if you're using something like Bluetooth uh, uh, BLE, right? Low, low energy. Um, so you, by processing locally, you get a lot like orders of magnitude faster response time, uh, which is joyful, right? It's joyful for your end customers and your battery lasts longer. So it's all good. Now, sometimes you will have to go to the cloud. And a lot of times you do want to go to the cloud to federate data and collect it across multiple devices and so on. So that, that use case is still there. What I like to think of is instead of sending the raw data up, sending the waveform you know, streaming off the, the 3D, uh, uh, accelerometer, do some pre-analytics, do some uh, tracking, alert, compression, and just send that over radio and you're still saving power. All right. And that uh, points to whoever knows what Tanstaffel is. No? No. Tanstaffel is, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. And, and the reason I put that up here is like, there's always attacks. You, to do those local analytics, you need more memory. You need more compute and you need more efficient compute. So getting back to the four points. Um, one of the points was it's AI is just a part of it. And here in this graph, AI is the box that says inference, which is what uh, when you feed data to uh, AI model, that's what it, the process is called in, inferring a uh, result from that data. But for a practical system, you need to be able to sense, to capture your data, you need to be able to process it into uh, something useful for the AI model. You do a little kind of 
the model itself, and then you do stuff with it. Like you start a timer, or you set up an alert, or um, you call the hospital because your your user's having a, a I don't know, a faint, fainting spell or, or is fallen or something. So that entire process, which is a streaming real time process has to fit within a power budget. And we like to think of it in terms of uh, one milliwatt for the entire process. Um, because that like that means that you can run your device, this device, on, on a couple of double A's for a year. And that means that if, if you have something sitting in the factory floor somewhere, that thing is maintenance free for a year. It's critical, right? It's, it's what makes uh, AI practical.